Get ready. Here we go. Okay, this is Eric Deloach, your residential book author, and I have a very, very special guest on this segment of American Authors and Others. Um, what I want to note about him, so everybody out there know worldwide, that he is quite the gentleman. Um, you, you could say on LinkedIn, he's that supporter and friend. He may not know you directly, but he's always watching and supporting everybody. I, 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 I'm a, a recipient, recipient of his support, you know, as saying a nice comment, you know, to kind of make you smile. Um, you play rap music or rock music or you do art or what, whatever you do, you will find him, you know, saying a kind word or putting a smile out or really sharing, you know, really trying to encourage the community. So he's kind of like the community um, best friend, if you will. If you didn't have a friend, you have a friend in, in him. So we have to kind of just, you, you ha that has to be noted because there's, there's not, there's no other person that's like him that I know that's on LinkedIn that I've run across and he didn't even know me, but 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 um that is such a kind thing. But at this time, let's allow him to go ahead and introduce himself and tell a little bit about himself. And then we'll, I think we'll have a great interview. I, re I really like this gentleman, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it, Eric. Um, and it's very, uh, um, my pleasure, you know, to, uh, do this and, and and meet somebody of your caliber. Um, my father, it started when I was a kid. Um, we, we, I grew up in Glendora and we were on the other side of the hill. You know, you like you have right. South Chicago and but North you, Chicago. But you, but you have to tell you have to tell them your name. And just oh, I'm sorry. Briefly. Yeah, they have to know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, my name is George Levisi and uh, I uh, started writing music. Um, well, maybe uh, when I was like 12 or 13, but I really didn't have a clue as to what I was doing. And it was kind of like I, I, I was telling this one woman that wanted to uh, do an interview uh, from LinkedIn about it. I, I said it was just like being on an island and uh, trying to uh, you know invent something for the first time that had never been invented before. Like, how would you make a wheel if you were the only one on an island, you know? And so I had my guitar and I was like, Hey, well, I, you know, if 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 uh, other people, you know, must have started with with maybe very little, and you know, if you go in the Bible, like King David, I mean, how did how did he, you know, what did he do to learn how to play the what 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 instrument did he learn, Eric? I, I don't remember in the Bible. Was it the some sort of stringed instrument? Wasn't it a basic? Yes, I, I I know that he was a good, great poet and a great, and he wrote songs as well. Yeah, I know that much. Yes. Yeah, so so that was my whole thing is, um, you know, and, and, you know, I had a great uncle from Chicago that was a, a priest and uh, he came to visit, you know, uh, us and and he was talking to me. He says, you have a very fertile imagination, George. You know, if you sprinkle <laughs> seeds in your head, I'll bet you start growing some trees or something. He was very well liked uh, in Chicago. You know, I mean, he had no blemishes after he passed away in his record. You know, if you Google him, but uh, he and I thought about what he said and everything. And I thought. Maybe um, you have to be that way because you have to like take things, you know, against all odds and try something. And you got to try anything, but you got to keep moving. My mother's 91, I think now. And she, my brother asked her, how do you, how did you make it this far? And she says, well, you just got to keep moving, you know? And I think that's really true. You got to try something. And, and if something ain't working, like our economy, then try something else. We shouldn't just stay stagnant and do nothing. We try something else. So I, I thought, if I'm writing a song, then um, why does it have to be a standard, you know, uh, you know, like, like the ballads, you know, just, uh, you know, the, uh, a one, four and five chord structure? Why can't I jump out of that frame and just pick a random chord and, and try it and try to sew the two chords together somehow? And th that was my basic approach. And, and, and this woman said, that's kind of ingenious. You know, I never, never thought about that. So, but, but then I would also look at like this, like stuff like George Harrison, even though he, later on he was uh, uh, questioned whether or not he really wrote My Sweet Lord. Cause you know, I was kind of like playing guitar in church and stuff like that. And I thought, well, you know, I kind of like that, you know, it's kind of in my range, I think, even though I, you know, I, I didn't feel I could really sing it. And I said, but it, it feels uh, comfortable. So I, I thought maybe if I, I 
if I get comfortable and use part of that, how would I tie it together with something like well, with the way my mind works, you know, it's just random, you know, and I just said, well, you know, there's another song called Best of My Love by the Eagles. And I said, they do this F sharp minor. And I'm and, and another guy showed me the chord at school in high school in my harmony class, Randy Natrini. And I thought, gee, God, you know, he's playing it on a Martin guitar, too. You know, back then it was like a I don't know, at least over three thousand dollar guitar, you know. And I said, this, this chord sounds so beautiful. I've got to take home and experiment with it. So I was experimenting with the high notes on the C major seventh. And I said, gee, but I picture a ballerina on her tippy toes going, I go, da, 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 can you take the time? And I, and I said, there it is, you know, I said, that'll draw, you know, the, the listener in. So I said, C major seventh, the F sharp minor, because I like best of my love when he goes, I'm going back in time to a sweet dream. It was a quiet night. And I wanted to get that part in there. So I, I jumped from the C major seventh to the F sharp minor. And then I start, you know, doing the verse right there, you know, and I, the my sweet Lord part, you know, right, right in there, you know, and F sharp minor is like a minor D, which is in my sweet Lord, you know. So I, I would just kind of like very unconventional and just uh, with the fertile imagination part, just and and the island, you know, a theory, you know, that if you were the first one on an island, what would you do? You know, you, you wouldn't have anybody telling you how to do it, you know, so how would you construct? So I started making like my own wheels and my own car or whatever. And uh, I went to school, like you said, you know, you, you, you have to be kind of humble and good to people. So I was kind of quiet at the time. And later on, I, I guess I kind of changed because every musician, I think, has to change. They can't just be in the practice room all day long. They have to, you know, go meet people. So the people, we had a 40 year reunion. They're saying, what happened to George? He used to be so quiet and everything. Well, <laughs> when you get on stage in front of your first people at an open mic, you have to know that you might fail. So I said, just do it, you know, and and. And don't don't be worried about failing because you got to get past that hurdle. So I I, I, I I experienced everything in pieces and then just kind of sewed everything together. And uh, then I made sure I got it copyrighted right away too. Uh, I was like only 17 and I had had it copyrighted. And and I didn't know that it was any good until Randy one day I saw him. I thought it was him at church and he had become homeless. In, in the time span of about 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, it was atypical because his mother was then charge of the LA Unified School music, you know, supervisor of the music for the whole LA Unified. It's the biggest elementary school in the United States. And they had a beautiful house you know, in the Porter Ranch. And I thought, how did this guy become homeless, you know? And I wasn't sure it was him because of that. So right. one day the priest was saying, what are we gonna do with this guy? He's like threatening to do this and that. And I said, maybe I, they don't know, maybe I, they don't know that I might know him. So I, I walked up to him and said, Randy? And he goes, George? He was really <laughs> excited. And I thought, maybe he liked my song <laughs> because this guy was blowing me away. I mean, he, he sounded like Gino Vanelli. I mean, he was unbelievable. And he was only like 16. And like like his guitar, I, I thought was worth like 10,000. I thought, man, this guy's rich, you know, and I'm right. Mr. Poor Guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And even though, because uh, my brother let me borrow his ovation at the time, so at least I kind of look like I might have, uh, you know, not complete poverty, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, But he had all these girls around him. I mean, just like Gino Vanelli would. And I'm like going, wow, this guy, I just took my hat off. And then, 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 you know, going to a high school, coming from a suburban area, like before we went on air, I was telling you, I grew up in Glendora. And my father, every Saturday morning when he'd come home from aerospace work, he would turn on the music. You know, I mean, I didn't realize those Italian-Americans are just, until I went to Italy, they just love music, man. It's just unbelievable. But he made sure we were exposed to a lot of his music, you know, which was like uh, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, you know, Elvis Presley, um, all of these uh, people, including the safaris that were actually from Glendora. And like I was saying, my dad was from South Chicago and North. He was like a half mixed breed of culture right. because um, his mother came from, um, his uh, father, I think, came from the poor South of Chicago and his mother came from the wealthy North. So oh. they, there was such a feud going on that they told him, told my grandmother, if you marry this, this guy, you know, Jack, my, my grandfather that I never knew, we will divorce you basically from the family and you'll be cut out of the family business. Wow. So 
Father Joe, her younger brother, who always had a lot of empathy for his sister, said, well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll you know, before before he became a priest, he bought a house. Right. And uh, and it, it was designated to in retirement for the retired priest. Right. So she got to live in that. And to right. get revenge, she told me, I'm not going to die until they all die. because <laughs> For sure, I get to live in his house, you know. Right. She, right. That. she outlived them all, you know. And they used to call right. her that, like, like the uh, prayer horse or warrior or something, you know, that uh, unstoppable, you know. But she did go to church like every morning, you know, and, and she was really devoted. But, um, yeah, so um, my dad's music kind of like um, was the, the background for inspiration because if the safaris could do it with uh, that hit wipeout and then i read some research on it and it, they said that song play uh was the most recorded drum solo in the history of drums drum wow. drums and music yeah it said yeah. it even ended up on songs uh, or on toys made in china you mm -hmm. know where they would t take a sound bite and put the that drum roll you know and the screaming wipeout part they would put it on toys and stuff and sell it. So that's why it became one of the most recorded uh, songs with a drum solo ever recorded because of wow. the, the fact that it, it could be used in merchandise and all that. Yeah. And maybe movies and stuff. But I, I haven't met a drummer that wants to learn that <laughs> that that beginning <laughs> drum thing, you know, but we were on the, like the south side of or it was like the south side but i don't think it was the south side it might have been yeah i think it, it actually was the south side of glendora on the other side of the north of these big foothills that was the wealthy area you know right and right. i thought god i always dream like why why didn't you know why can't i be on the other side you know yeah but, uh, it was kind of you know um not not as uh, happening on the on the other side except for music so uh i i uh, ended up hearing rumors about uh and, and i tried to prove to see if they were true and so far it came back negative but i was told a rumor and nevertheless i think numer rumors if you believe them they can be a source of inspiration you know right uh, i'll go into that if you remind me later because i think that played a big part in getting me through college and and, and tell, me, well, tell us about the rumor what was what was the rumor but the, the rumor was that uh, greg eisman was uh he was a, a an adopted kid by uh, this white family up there and uh, that was, owned a liquor store in Glen right. and, and they lived in Glendora and uh, he was on like the next street over from where I lived. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, my dad was like, Hey, you know, I want my kids if they're going to play music to do like the blues or, or something like Nat King Cole or something like that. But this rock and roll thing was just not going to go. But my brother would mm -hmm. always sneak over there and, and, and the guy would try to give him even guitars, you know, because his dad made a lot of money with the liquor store, you know, Right. You don't see, yeah, and that business never seems to be hurting in poor times and and in, in good times. So my my dad was like oh, fearful when he saw that electric guitar that that it would be drugs and rock and roll, you know, and then he's, he'd lose control of his family. Mm -hmm. And so my brother was under a lot of repression, you know, uh, at, because of that, you know, because there was a little bit of uh, you know I'd say discrimination of music. Right. And uh, so, uh, Greg. Uh, well, what, always what, used what, to what, what, what year was that? What, around what time? The About 60, 62, 63, okay, okay, 64. Okay. okay. And, and I was so, born 69, so I'm getting educated right now. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, Greg was like a, a thorn in my dad's side, you know, because being an adopted kid, he probably wasn't too uh, adjusted, you know? Right, right. And, and so uh, the parents were trying the best they could with him. And, but he, he had everything he wanted, including he, he said that he used to, you know, go visit the, the safaris and um, okay. they would use him to babysit when they would take off. So I, I finally got a hold of one of the safaris um, mothers uh, and she said, no, nah, that's not true. I don't remember the name and blah, 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 you know, but right. I mean, this, this is like 50 years later. She's telling me this, you know, so right. Maybe, right. maybe maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But then he went on to say that he also knew Joni Mitchell because he moved to Santa Barbara and stuff. And she was out there, I think, or or something like that. And so. Who knows if it's true, but so, so that's probably true. That's for sure. Probably true. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, basically he's, he's probably still alive. So maybe he could give some exegesis to prove that the lady's wrong, you know, one of the safari's mother, but uh, yeah. So basically I thought, wow, this came from Glendora. I mean, I'm drinking the same water that, 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 that they drink. Why can't I be like that? You know? Yeah. So then another, another rumor came that Leonard Sassine, 
who, when I first started taking lessons, I was about 12 years old on guitar, that right. he was also at this thing called English Music Store. Okay. okay. And it was, I think, on Roland Street in, in Covina, West Covina area. And I, and I thought, okay, I hear this guy is at the school, the safaris, and the drummer was at, because they say he gave, came up with the idea of the drummer for Wipeout when he was in the marching band. Well, okay. we, all musicians, I think, study music enough to know that basically marching music is where all music is generates from, you know, because wars were a very popular thing when music was first invented and they would use them to, you know, to, 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 to raise the uh, morale and, and march and go to war. And, and then things kind of spread out and you could use it more, more than just, you know, for war, war uh, uh, inspiration. So basically, uh, football games had the, you know, the drum, the bands and, you know, psych them up before the games. And he came up with that idea, you know, for Wipeout. And uh, Leonard was teaching at the school. And I thought, wow, you know, you never know, you know, I mean, maybe that's why he's there. Who knows? Because they, you know, they were kind of like almost uh, about the same time as the Beach Boys. So they were, you know, uh, actually um, sharing ideas, I think, at one point, you know, so. I, Leonard Sassine, I was just hearing a lot of rumors that he was so good of a high school voice teacher, you know, talk about gospel choirs and all that. That's why I, I know for a fact that my history teacher was correct when he says that Italians are mixed blood. They're part North African. They're, they're part black. I mean, my uncle okay. had cur curly, kinky hair, you know, yeah, even though it was yeah. blondish, you know. But yeah. In fact, I had a dream about him last night, too. But uh, yeah. yeah. He 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 had rumors too. He would say that he met Elvis Presley. And, right, and this, right. is, this, this part is true that he, he did date the Pasadena City Queens all the time because he had a '57 Thunderbird, and they, he lived up in Sierra Madre at that house right. that my my uncle right. bought in advance from my right. grandmother. So that that part's probably true, but I don't know if he really met Elvis because he liked football. He tried out for the Olympics in the long jump, and he got monoleukiosis, and he couldn't, come, you know, finish the mm -hmm. the tests and all that for the Olympics. But, but you know, he said he used to toss the football with Elvis during, the, you know, and meet him at the Brown Derby. It might okay. be true because he was extremely be handsome. You know, uh, right. he got the, he got the good genes from my grandmother apparently. Yeah. And um, so, uh, you know, Leonard Sassine supposedly was so good that his choirs would sing at Disneyland. Okay. At the, at the special concert, the night, the Christmas night, you know, at midnight when the day changes into or into the next morning of of, of uh, Christmas, right? Uh, they would take all the college choirs that, that and compete, and the top ones would get to sing. Right. And it would be on. Remember the uh, old channels, uh, old black and white had UFH. Right. Well, you could get this on UFH, and it would be televised. You know, it wouldn't be one of the prime time mainstream channels like Channel Seven, Channel Four, Channel Two. But it would be on like Channel 28 on UFH. Right. So I thought, man, this guy must be good if his high school choirs get to sing with the college choirs. Yeah. So I want I wanted to see, you know, what this was about. And and it was it was like a no, no brainer for my parents. You're not going to a public school, you know, just like right. my brother right. wasn't gonna play rock and roll. Right. And so um, so my brother was my one of my older brothers was being recruited by uh, I don't know if you remember. Uh, the football high school um, leagues and how they would have a famous high school. Well, Bishop Obama, where my brother ended up and my dad wanted me to go there with him. And I, and I, I just kind of went along with it because I was so young, but um, he was scouted to be like, take the place of John McKay Jr. or um, the quarterback, Pat Hayden, who became, right. I think, the athletic director over at USC. But I think it's now Paul McDonald, who I used to sit behind in class at Bishop Alma, and he became right. a professional football player also for the Buffalo. But um, so, yeah, so I was in the shadow of all of these things. But I, I thought, man, if, if you do something you like, you know, that's that's what life's about. So uh, I was so tickled that my dad wanted to always he always had a higher and higher goal. You know, even when he was arrested uh, trying to start a company. Right. Uh, uh, you know, they didn't like guys back in the early 60s when he was at Red Corps hiring blacks and Asians. That was okay. a no, no. But he, he okay. got away with it, I think. And okay. this guy named Paul Mubarak called our house in Porter Ranch after he passed away. And he didn't know my dad had passed away. And he said, Ernie, I said, no, no, that's my father. He's been gone. And he said, oh, my gosh, you should have been able to see your father at work. 
I mean, if he walked off the job, we would all walk with him. He had such great character and he's such a good guy, you know, and that's why like, I'm amazed that maybe, you know, you were giving me like, you were being too good to me, Eric, you know, it's like. No, it's, but it's, it's true, it's true, but, 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 but we, we <laughs> maybe, both know it's true though. We both know this maybe, is maybe it rubbed off a little bit, you know, yeah, but yeah. guys like Ed DeJoy that offer you a job just because your father passed away are unbelievable. I mean, some, this wow. is one thing that the music industry I hope never loses is some of those guys, whether whether they wanted to be a musician, like he went to Las Vegas and tried out, he wanted to take over after Roy Orbison, you know, kind of, you know, uh, I guess faded, but they told him in Las Vegas, Ed, you got a fantastic voice, but there's guys equal to you that are right. just clawing their way to the top. I right. recommend that you, you know, maybe try something that different, you know, but so he, he was, he got a photographic memory because he was working for, I, I think oh. it was like a, like a gas company, I guess back East, they have to stay warm and all this stuff, you know? And he would have to memorize, he told me, all these different customers, you know, because, you know, they, they might get a angry and he'd say, but remember you said this and this. <laughs> so he developed a photographic mind, which wow. was great when he was working for Herb Albert, you know, and yeah. his record company, because that's where he was doing uh, the Carpenters and and uh, he was the promotion man, his wife tells me. She corrected me and Joe's, because uh, Ed said a and R. I I thought. But right. Pam, Ed's wife says she's still alive. They're both still alive. He said, right. no, he was a promotion man for everything the Carpenters did. So and he that, switched. That's a great group. That I know. You know what? <laughs> my, my, now, let me tell you, my, my grandfather passed away. And if, it's interesting. In the Deep South, Elberton, Georgia, um, that's like Northeast Georgia. He was yeah. a farmer. And he had these white uh, artists of uh, of you know the vi the vinyl um, albums this 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 black man in the deep south you know and he the carpenters i remember them and uh and maybe peter paul and mary a few yeah others. and and he liked that music wow yeah I, I even liked arlo guthrie and this land is your land from california yeah that kind of yeah. stuff and then his son uh not not arlo but woody and then arlo ellis's restaurant uh, my brother was 17 and he took off and went uh, to Europe uh, on a, um, a, a magazine book sales a crew. And he met this black black guy, I forget his name, but right. let's, let's just call him Sam. And right. he, he and Sam came to our house one time in Glendora, you know, because right. we're on the South side and our, and our, our houses aren't built with raised floors, you know, and all that, you know, it's the old concrete slab and all this. And here's the, this hot musician that he, my brother met selling magazines and books and right. they, he was in Spain. And I guess these guys had a great time. So when he came back, my brother talked him into coming to the house right. because this guy was professional uh, singer. Right. And, I, and I asked him, hey, can you, you know, I'm learning guitar. Can I hear you sing? You know, and all I knew was Alice's restaurant on the guitar. You know, that's all I could do for him. But he says, you got any money? And, and I, I said, because it's like a lawyer. Yeah. Lawyers, if they learn all this stuff in law school, if you pay right. when they start talking. That's when the right. clock starts, right. you know. He yeah. was the same way, a smart guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But my brother wanted him to at least sing what he heard him sing. I guess those right. guys, when they work hard, Right. And it's Christmas and they're all alone in Spain, you know. Right. He sang them this a white Christmas song. And it, my brother was just spellbound. My brother is a connoisseur like my dad of music, you know. Right. And, and I said, God, if my brother says he's good, I just believe it. He doesn't even have to yeah. prove it, you know. But I wish right. he would sing. Right. But I don't think he sang. We just talked and had a good right. time, you know. Right. Because, I mean, he was saving his voice. He knew that things were finite, you know. Right. That, it, right. that if he used it up too much after. I mean, when you're in the practice yeah. room as a vocalist five or six right. hours right. a day. And then right. you reach that pinnacle. You right. you're, you're like a, an attorney. You want to get paid by the hour, you know. Right. And, well, and it's going to be let, big let me, Well, let me just say that there's. Let me just say this, and everybody knows. Uh, just take it in this way right here. You have there's there's good black people. There's good there's good white people. Right, right, right. Bad right. black people. <laughs> yeah. and there's bad white people. Yeah, so yeah exactly. In, in every group. So you know, we just right, take it from right. that angle. I, right, I, think right. he, I think it would have been nice if he would have, you know, you were, you were spell, you you were, you, yeah, your, your brother told you by them. I thought yeah, spellbound. It would have been nice if, but I mean, but yeah, but but, but well, in, in a way, in a way, you got a chance to talk. What was he talking about? He was so shy too, you know. But right. he, he was right. just a lovable guy. I mean, he just sat right. there. He right. didn't have to sing, and you like this guy. 
Right. Um, it, maybe because of his confidence. And I think that's why right. we need right. music in, edu in our education system, because right. actually I'm, I'm a teacher without a license, you know? Right. They found right. out that you cannot have a parent in a teaching program right. and expect them just to shut up and, 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 and sew up their mouth. That right. My, right. my daughter is the world to me, and they could yes. not shut me up. And I happen to know an Italian-American supervising teacher at LA Unified. And like I said, it was the biggest in the country. Right. And so right. his last name was DeBellis, and he's retired now. And I think right. he might have even passed away by now. But right. he was in charge of my daughter's district. And I said, I happen right. to know your, your, your family when I right. lived in Glendora and was going to Bishop Amon. And right. so we became friends, and I became like a threat, I think, right. to my college. Okay. And so they wanted to do everything to shut me up because here I had a child in LA Unified at the time. Right. I was going to be a teacher. Right. There's something came on here. Uh, Eric, do I have a, um, a second to find yeah. out a, a radio or something came on? Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That's fine. Take your time. So, um, uh, where was I? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. You're talking about school, and you said, "Why did they find you as a threat?" I mean, so oh, you're yeah. like, a, like a a homeless, nice guy that you know that would with 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 um you would yeah. be. We could call you the the um, good Samaritan. That, that that's the that's the profile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I I um, it, it's hard to say um, because I'm mixed blood. My mother's Mexican American and my father's Italian American. Okay. I would have people with a British accent. I don't know where they got them from, but they would hire them in these positions, uh, in the uh, either in the education department or the administration right. department, and they, they right. would overlap with each other. Right. And one of the ladies, uh, she, you know, I, I don't even remember her name. Uh, to, right. it, right. it might pop up, but I don't think yeah. it's necessary. But right. she had a British accent, I remember, and she was white. Right. And right. she would go, hey, hey Jorge. I go, Jorge, I grew up in Glendora. Right. Everybody knows the safaris aren't black, you know, they're right, not right, Mexican. Right. Well, right. What's going on here? And yeah. so I said, Jorge, this really ticked me off, you know, because if somebody's going to What does that mean? What does that mean? It, it means George in, in, in Spanish. In, in, George uh, in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so she, okay. I see. Yeah. Which, look, apparently she was confused. Yeah, because... The last name Lovisi should be a no-brainer. That right, right. why is she jumping? She was going. She was being discriminative just by right. my features or right. something, right? Because I'm I'm sure my song doesn't even have an accent. I grew up well, in a white neighborhood. Say, well, you you, you uh, to me, I consider um, uh, Italians to be honest with you as white. That's yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. In the, south, in the south, I think you would, in Georgia, you would be considered white. I mean, I know. <laughs> white, one hundred percent white. Just yes. like that. You remember the sheriff in Arizona? I forget his name, but he used yeah. to make the the guys that he would arrest wear those pinstripe pink or things and everything. He was yeah. Italian American, but he was a, like a bad example of an Italian because he right. was like a, a bigot, you know, as my right. dad would call right. him a bigot, you know. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just I'm just saying that is kind of. But I mean, maybe it's different sections of the country. I lived in San Francisco for like five months one time, but I'm just saying in Georgia you would be considered, and I would I consider you white. Right, you know, right, and and, and, that, and and that and and let me just say the different races. It doesn't. It's your heart to me. Right, it's your heart. I don't care what race you are. It's your heart if you're a good person. And I know from from interaction with you on LinkedIn that you, that you have a good heart. And to me, you can you're, you're white. And and there's nothing wrong with being being white. But but Eric, you know, I mean, Eric. You, know, you, you you have interesting experiences and you have positive things to share and and and, and um. A lot of things to to con contribute so you know you're a good person that that's where i start with yeah you know you know it's very therapeutic when you talk and and the chemistry and everything because uh it, it everything is centered around a teaching and a teachable moment i think this is a teachable moment for everybody listening right. that when 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 you're going to school and and you, you your goal is to spend an extra like 10 years which i did taking right. pre-teaching classes like child right. psychology, child development. And right. then you say, okay, let me, let me try it now. I think I'm ready. I've already got a degree from Loyola Marymount by this time. Right. It's a liberal right. studies equivalent. Right. But then they're telling me, no, for you, not your peers, your peers, we don't care. We'll let them use the Loyola Marymount degree and we'll make them teachers in the district program or something. 
right. uh, which some of them did, some of my peers. Right. But for me, they made me take the whole Bachelor of Arts liberal studies program over again. It's called a waiver program. Okay. And this this is this um, British sounding lady is like at the top and right. she, she's right. like making me jump through all these hoops. The bottom right. line was there weren't they weren't going to let me be a teacher because I, during the student teaching here, I'm student teaching in LA Unified at different right. schools. The school right. that I liked that had an aerospace principal, she, right. she switched right. from aerospace to education, elementary education. Right. The supervising teacher from, from my college came over to visit and told all of us in a group, all women except me, right. if any of you piss me off, I'm going to make sure, she may have not used those exact words, right. that in my 40 years of being a principal, I know a lot of principals and you will not last at any school if you piss me off. And right. I thought, I don't want to be threatened. I'm a returning adult student. I'm not one of right. these young people, right. you know, they're, right. they're, but the young people, they want them so they can mold them right. and, and they can't be objective at that point because right. they want to show their parents that, you know, the, you know, the money that they're forking yeah. out for them to go to college was yeah. a good, it was a good bet. Whereas right. me, I said, Nate, hey, my daughter's going to this school. The right. hell if I'm going to put up with if I'm at a school and somebody right. and, 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 and a truck comes or a, a station wagon comes and fills right. it up with food and takes off. I'm right. going to call, you know, call it for what it is. And, and, and another and another thing is that 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 she's wrong. She's supposed to address you by your name. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, you, you know, know and look, look, I'm a person that, that went to school to college or whatever. But in, but but you know what? I know you're a person of the arts. I'm a person of the arts. I wrote a book. I wrote songs and stuff like that and different things like that. Th those things, those songs that you wrote, and they can never take those things away from you. You copy, That's your ownership. You know what right. I mean? They can never. That's what I like about the arts. Once My, you yeah. create something, and I like your song on, the, on LinkedIn too, they can never take that away from you. Thank you so much. You know, yeah. I'm even thinking, uh, now check this out. What I'm looking, for, I hate it's bad. I'm looking forward to once I do pass or whatever. Just put on my my tombstone, a book of <laughs> a songwriter. It yeah. was a songwriter that lived. That's yeah. I, I, I can rest in peace then. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, that's really um, kind of deep, but but simple. You know, I mean, it, it's so important. You know, to. Uh, you know, everybody goes through life at some point saying, look at me, you know, and right. and and we have to kind of address our way out, too. And I kind of like don't like to think about the, the way out. But a lot of people do. They're comfortable with, you well, know, let's, that let's, let's go. Let's go here, because I found this fascinating in reading about you a little bit that um you were in, I think, the college phase area and you had several classes from the disney film editor um yes jody and johnson M milan tell me about that experience i mean oh people, my God. people would 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 i mean I hate to say people would would, would die to, to have that experience tell us about that you know i uh, in having a you know the olive skin and, and get, going back to race and everything right. i thought man you know this woman is blonde and blue eyed and petite. Right. In fact, she told us one time in class, she walked into a room of all right. these executives for, for, I think it was Disney. Right. And, and, and they're waiting for her to walk in and right. she walks in and they didn't even recognize or, or even guess that it was Jody Johnson. They right. didn't even know because she was tiny. So they right. have this prejudice, like that my father, they wanted to see somebody six two and above right. like my father. And right. she's only maybe five five or something or five two right. or something. Right. And she walks in, but she she she's dynamic. She you know, right. she, she trains horses and she's not afraid right. of anybody, including people of color like me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, man, I tell you, she's so pretty. It's right. unbelievable, you know, it's just incredible to have a teacher like that that yeah. I mean, you could just stare at all day and, right. and, and be happy, you know, but right. but, she, but she, she, she's a stickler for, for work. I mean, okay. she she has everything so organized, but there's right. such humor, too. Right. I right. mean, 
I, I was trying to get all of this stuff satisfied, you know, all this uh, classical literature and everything. And, and she's got all these things in her curriculum, I guess. I'm using probably elementary language. Right, but, right. And right. at the college level, I don't think they call it curriculum. But I, right. I get all this stuff ready. Right. And I, I, I just want to, you know, kind of get a passing grade, you know, because right. to get this way waiver out of the way so I can get back to CSUN and finish my my teaching courses. Right. And she, she's going like uh, I dump I dump out my my briefcase on her floor in her office and she's going she's like, wow, George, you know, but, uh, you know, th this is like. A lot of stuff, and 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 uh, she's just humoring me every right. bit of the way, and yeah. it's just like you know, um, you know, George. A lot of the people that that come in here and and need what you need, a lot of them d don't make it, you know. And right, and, and but um, but I said it doesn't matter as long as I get a passing grade, you know. Right. I, right. I, I know I know that I can get the B that you want me. As a teacher, you like to give away good things, you know. Right, right. But you know, if I just get a passing grade, it's okay, you know. Right. And and, and she would humor me about my disposition, and right. and it was just like I, it was unbelievable. In fact, her um, Robert Williams, you know, and and I'd like to give a plug to uh, the Mental Health Society too, if I could, Eric. Sure. Sure. Um, she she ended up um, indirectly. This is a plug for the mental health. But um, she, her home, when she was married to this uh, professor that I that I adored also, um, the house that they bought was uh, Robert Williams' parents' house okay. in Topanga, wow. Topanga Canyon. So okay. uh, yeah, so um, and and then and then they divorced, and uh, so she you know was living with her daughter and stuff. And but um, she it, it was just a, like. Her husband was unbelievable. I mean, right. as a history teacher, he went way back to when my father told me, yeah. if you want to live at home, that's fine, but you have to get a job. Okay. If you want to go to college, you don't have to get a job. You can stay at home. And I thought, wow. Wow, I, think I like that idea. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I started going to college. Right. And I, I met these really fascinating teachers because we had now made it to Porter Ranch from Glendora. And I, I never went to the transition, but they can read about it on, on my song. Right. I think it's on my song or it's on SoundCloud. But right. uh, so we're up there meeting people like Randy Natrini and Mark right. Savage, who was on some television shows. And he's in my Harmony One class in my choir. And, and some of these guys were so talented, Eric. They could have made it in Hollywood, but instead they became dentists or, or a speech therapists or whatever. And wow. it's like, yeah, it's like, these guys literally were taking probably they had tutors and stuff right and they, they were already doing like the the, the perfect uh intervals right you know just the teacher would ask them you know do do a perfect five or do a perfect four and 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 they would do it you know at the snap of a finger whereas i'm coming from glendora i'm like going hey i never had a tutor like i said i was like right. making, inventing my own language right. for learning music and uh, i was like boy man i better get home and start practicing this stuff you know yeah. And, and so, so it was a big catch up game. That's why I thought it was such a big deal when Randy recognized me as a right. human being that uh, meant right. something to him. I thought maybe he liked my song. Right. And so right. that made me think maybe, you know, I'm going to have surgery pretty soon from thyroid cancer. Okay. I better put it on the internet because what happens if I lose my voice? So I right. scrambled and tried to do some cover songs by Jim Croce. Okay. That I, he kind of helped me a lot with music by listening to his music and 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 learning his songs and stuff but i was so nervous eric because it was like 20 in 24 hours i was going to have surgery and right. i had my uh, uh, recording equipment behind me or around here and i'm like and, and i'm in a different environment i'm no longer in porter ranch and i'm like the acoustics aren't the same and everything so i'm trying to cram it and it's like cramming before a test right i'm used to that so right. I'm, i thought i could handle the pressure and everything but I guess I didn't do so well because I didn't really like it, but I thought I better just put it out there because if I lose my voice during the surgery, right. it's so complicated. I thought, I thought the way you lose your voice is they put the innovating tube for oxygen in your lungs and then right. they pull it out and maybe it, right. it, it scratches something. No, right. your, neck, your neck is so complicated that even in the back, you have laryngeal nerves. So okay. when they're pulling out, because I took anatomy too when I was right. at because of my dad saying, you know, you don't have to work if you go to college. So I, <laughs> and, and then he died of pancreatic cancer. So that put me on a afterburner, you know? Okay, right. 
Yeah. So I, I just said, I'm going to take physiological psychology and I got okay. an A plus. So they let me into a higher college because I got an A plus. Mind you, Eric, <laughs> I never wanted to go to college. I wanted to be a musician. Yeah, well, so, it's, but it's, take, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Continue, continue. Yeah. So, so, so what happens apparently is, and, and I've seen cadavers. I, I, I was a stickler, man. If I didn't pass the first time anatomy, and it, speaking of, you know, of it doesn't matter if you're white or black, there was this blonde chick like Jody Johnson. She was blonde, right. blue eyed. I, I think she passed away during COVID. Right. But every time the teacher would give me a hard time in anatomy, she would stick up for me. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I, she's on LinkedIn, but she doesn't answer. So I really think she, she bit the dust. You know, okay. it was my age. What, what is it about the arts? I have to ask you, what is it about the arts? It seems like no, and, and I consider you white. So, but what, what is it about the arts that no matter what, you know, your background, race, ethnicity, or what, whatever it may be, we seem to have a, 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 a bond, a friendship among a special love and bond among the people in the arts. I don't know what it is. It, we seem to have a, a a higher, more more character. People from. I'm, I'm glad. Country. I'm glad you're focused, Eric, because in the beginning I said we've got to make a footnote here to come right. back and, and and give some kudos to the way music used to be run in the music industry. You know, right. if that if we lose that honeybee uh, right. mentality and become socialist, right, then we'll we'll never have the musicians. With a Democrat or a Republican, we'll never right. have an end to joy. We'll never right. have somebody that that pulls the red carpet out, right, and treats you white or black, like right. like like your King Solomon or King David. You right. will never have that, and it, and it right. used to be that way in the seventies. And right. I see it moving further and further away from that with all this technology and everything. And right. it's got its pluses and minuses, just like black and white has its pluses and minuses. Like you said, right. you, know, you, can, you can have good people that are white and bad people that are white. And you can have good people that are, you know, um, black right. and bad. People. Yeah, yeah, but if we, if we lose that one thing that you're talking about, what is it that music brings us together right. and makes us respect each other just like right. we're working for the queen bee and we don't care right. that there's a queen bee we're not going to try to topple her, right. her regime you know we right, love right. it we love making honey for artists we right. love i love going to tower records and counting the records whether it be for you or for cat stevens or, or whoever i right. love it because if you catch those guys across the street when we were on sunset at the record company and right. you catch somebody like you in there and, right. and you, you just drop what you're doing and say hey They'll understand because he's on our catalog, man. And, right. and, and they want us to keep the queen bee happy, you know? Right. And I love it. I'm glad you brought us and kept us centered and focused what this whole interview should be about. You well, know? Tell me about, tell me a little, little bit more about Miss Johnson. You seem like she was very interesting. Yeah, I'm glad well, you brought tell, me tell back about, to her. What, 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 what did you, you, okay, you, we, we, we can, we can, we can uh, gather that, that she really, had a sense of humor, and she she was a moral person. She she stood up for you. What was some of the the, the... she she never used she never used race right. as a as a, a as a a card in anything. Right. You right. remember when OJ um, didn't yeah. get you know won his trial or whatever? They right. called it the race card. Right. She right. she she runs like hell in the opposite direction. Okay. Anything to do with race. Right, she doesn't right. want to hear it. And right, right. it's a, I think the story went in class because she shared it publicly in class. I'll share it publicly uh, yeah. on, on this interview. She yeah. said in class one time that there was a, a man down the street that uh, I guess he had lost his wife, but right. her own mother was a, a, a kind of apprehensive about her little blonde daughter going there to meet him and everything, you know? Right. Right. He, and so one day he brought some cookies over I, uh, and I uh, Think this was correct huh? and um the, the mother wouldn't let her eat whatever it was that he brought over okay and and she really felt a, a, like some empathy for this man and couldn't understand why her mother was prejudiced right right and i uh, and I, I i kind of like uh, think that affected her that she would never be prejudiced for color for yeah. gender for anything that right. to do with that that she right. had made up her mind as a little kid that she was her whole life would be devoted. I think her father was a school teacher. So, right. yeah, so, uh, and she became a teacher. And right. then, yeah, you know, she just uh, like, uh, I mean, 
she she was the uh, the English editor from Mulan. And so, right. I mean, I was like fascinated that she could be so humble. Right. And it was it reminded me of the, of the kind of like the music industry, you know, where right. she to me was the queen bee. She's not making a record, but right. she's teaching us how to be creative. She right. would teach us stuff like I'm sure you probably read in my description under my song on YouTube for Can You Take the Time to Unwind, where I, where I talk about, you know, uh, when you write before Western people, even Africa's Western European or, or you know, they're, they're, they're part of the European culture. And you come to the United States, you better put a little bit of the Bible in there. If you're doing literary work, because that's going to be a common denominator. Right. And she, right. she drilled that into us. Right. And so what, is, what does my nephew do? He's like selling a coffee table book for $700,000 for a bidding war between Universal and um, Paramount. And right. he, he would listen to me and steal all my ideas that came from Jody Johnson. And here, oh, I'm, no. get, here I'm getting the flack from, oh, you know, no. being called Jorge. And, and he's being yeah. like a, a wild fire out there that you need to put out <laughs> right. and he's, he's taking he's getting all the benefits for the hard strikes that you and i would would I, do I, I, to get to work i think you got a title of his of the song you got to do something with it uh, <laughs> you're, you're the wildfire yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's you got to use that, that and maybe maybe you and song. i we could collaborate you yeah, know I, I would like to see what you would do you came up with i would like to see what you would create with that wow yeah. just, well, just another uh, just another wildfire <laughs> you know you know you know why i came up with that probably yeah. I, I ended up i ended up right after college i said this aerospace industry that my father used to work out even though they rolled out the red carpet right i said it ain't from it's not my cup of tea no way i yeah. said uh you know they, they do stuff good in space you know for nasa right. but they right. equally do bad things too you know right uh, like right. Air, you know but anyways we won't get in the negative i guess but uh i said i told my 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 i was gonna get married and i told the woman i was gonna get married hey you know what uh let's i think we had gotten married finally and i said let's let's join this youth conservation corps because we weren't uh, officially old, older than 22 let's say okay and the okay. youth conservation corps are still allowed people up to like age 22 or 23 or something right in california right. and so what they did is they made me into a firefighter she of course wasn't you know like firefighter material but right. i fought a couple brush fires and wow. and, and that every experience helps you in the music uh, right. life the life of a musician yeah this guy was not a musician but he was training us how to how to do hazard reduction which right, is a big right. part of firefighting when right, when you're right. when you're knocking out a weed or, or a piece of brush right and there's flames a mile long you know or right. a fire that spreads out of, in miles and miles right. how do you keep your sanity and right. if 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 they tell you you're you're going to work and you know uh, how do you know when it's going to end he says you pretty much have to count each weed you knock out you know Wow. And, and and he says, otherwise you'll go crazy because you won't know a beginning and an end. Right. So I thought, you know what? This is really applicable to work in itself. You know, you have to keep track, you know, of your beginning and your end. If you're writing music, you have to right. start with a first note and you right. have to continue uh, the next day with the note that you left off. Otherwise, you'll never have the continuity to make it into a, a musical you know, melody that that connects with the day before. Right. And so I, I, I learned that that all of the blues that you suffer with assignments that are endless are really a lesson in life to, to be transferred to the music that you write. And it's same thing when I was working for Bank of America that I don't put on my resume there at LinkedIn. Right. But it was like every customer you call, right. you have to uh, you know document, but you also have to make it a numbers game that that you don't let freak you out. Otherwise, right. you won't you won't be hired or you'll be fired, you know, so right. or you won't be employable. And so I, I just learned that on LinkedIn, it's it's transferable to LinkedIn that fighting fires or making telephone calls. It's all about like in the record company, when you have to do inventory, you have to start at the ground zero or the bottom. And you have to make sure that you you're you're associating not just creativity with work, but actual material accountability too you know there's some there's a need to keep track of things you know right and, and you have to have minimal focus to to write a song because you have to continue with the idea that you started and if you don't 
have, you know, that, that, like they say about college, you know, that they say that if somebody spends four years in an institution like a college, we might hire them because of that fact is a good starting point. They showed that they can stay someplace put and they're not going to take off after we train them and everything. And I, I think that's applicable. I think my dad's strategy really uh, was a good idea to get me out of my bedroom and and mm -hmm. wanting to be a famous guitar player and and show me the real world. You know, I mean, right. it, it, it's you have to uh, stay put for a while before some people call it um, the expression I, I lost, but I'll just I'll try to say it in regular layman's English. Um, you know, you you have to like pay your dues. You know, you have right, to right, in right. the beginning. There's people are not going to accept you. I don't right. care what race you are. That's they're they're going to they're, they're going to penalize you and say, hey, he's a new newcomer that we'll call it new newcomers blues. Right. You know, that right. could be a title of another song. That's you know? another song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I like that. I like you know, that. That's a very good title. You got to do something with that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you start out, people right. are just prejudiced across the board. They right. don't want some new guy taking over their territory. Right, you know? right. That's and so th they, they make you pay for it in the beginning, but then right. they grow to love you after time, you know? Right, right. And, and so I, I'm wondering really if it was just a political thing between the North and South, you know, it was a turf game because right. I've seen some black people love the property that they got. Like my friend, Sam Douglas, who's passed away right. after the right. civil war, he got right. a bunch of property in Texas and everything. And then he went right. to, on to become a great teacher right. at, in Louisiana at his mm -hmm. Catholic college, I think it was called Xavier. Or, right, yeah, Xavier, and, I, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, he was terrific. I'm sure that his yeah. legacy is still in the San Fernando Valley. Right. I'm trying to remember the name of the high school he taught at. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I took an art class over there and Sam was incredible. I mean, he'd be there at six in the morning to open the church, you know? And yeah. And his, his daughter became uh, uh, Rinalda, I think is her name, Rinalda or Rinalda. Yeah. Okay. He became a fantastic singer uh, and okay. professional and everything. And yeah, yeah so um, I, I just. Um, but back to this, te this teacher, what did you learn? Because um, you, you dealt with film, radio, uh, TV, some uh, the arts. And what 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 was you said that one one thing that you learned from from Miss Johnson, Milan, whatever, this this famous um, Disney um editor was was to put something of the bible in 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 a piece that that kind of connects people yeah like for example my my nephew he did a book uh, uh it was a twisted uh you know like character he twisted the character uh of a bert and ernie okay you know from the simpsons he just twisted them made them look all ugly and everything right. and made, made it into a book when and it was a like a gofundme book Okay. And I told I was sitting at a party um, at, at his house and uh, and uh, uh, his girlfriend was sitting uh, with him across mm -hmm. the table. And I was mm -hmm. talking about Jody Johnson and how she mentioned that, you know, that, uh, you know, if, if you do put something uh, of Western literature like the Bible in your 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 script for your your book or your your you know film story. It's going to have a better chance of being uh, taken by the uh, producers or the uh, directors uh, more right. seriously because they can they they're they're educated and they know what people read and stuff. Right. And, and so, uh, lo and behold, my idea at that time was Brothers Keeper. Okay. And my, my dad always taught us, man, you've got to love your brothers. Don't be hitting on each other, you know, and right, beating right. each other up. Otherwise, right. they want to make you guys kiss each other, you know? Oh and so, <laughs> so, so it, it was kind of a, a, a different kind of a threat, you know, not right. a, a negative abusive threat, but right. uh, it, it fit perfectly, Brothers Keeper, because my, right. I, you always want to live your father's dream. And, right. and even though he didn't get his aerospace company that he wanted, I right. figure at least we can keep his uh, legacy of, of philosophy or his religion alive. And, right. uh, and so I was, uh, my nephew knew that he knew, he knew my idea and everything. So what does he call his book? Brother's keeper, you know, the, the thing oh, about, yeah. <laughs> but, and I'm like going, gee, he doesn't even mention my name. And, uh, Eric, Eric, Eric Deloach mentions my name before my own flesh and blood. You know? <laughs> and I used to you know, babysit. Him and his sister. By the way, his sister was this beautiful, gorgeous, blonde, blue-eyed. I mean, she was right. just 
Right. So I would play house or poo poo corner for the two when they were kids. Right. While my brother and his wife took off, you know. Right. And my brother was doing really good. This is at a time when uh-huh. you remember that guy, uh, Chris Rawlings, was murdered in. Uh, um, maybe you didn't hear the news back east, but we had this guy Chris Rawlings, and he ran a boiler room, and okay. uh, he um, he he had so much money he was flaunting it, and you right. just don't do that kind of thing, you know. Right. But right. anyways. Uh, some some guys that were you know uh, out of prison or whatever, they immediately recognized he had money and they ended right. up hijacking his car and him, right? And he put him in the trunk of his like like my brother had at the time, you know, like a, right. a Rolls Royce almost. My brother's um, wasn't that high of a level. He was to have like a, a Mercedes or a, what was the other car at the time? To BMW maybe? Uh, no, Audi? a little bit higher than a BMW. I think it was a Jaguar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so they stuffed him in, in the Rolls Royce right. uh, trunk and were driving to his house in Woodland Hills to get more money from his right. house. So right. in the trunk, I think cell phones were fairly new, but he had right. one and right. he called and told his wife they're on the way to our house. Right. And so his wife got on the roof because it was too, she already saw them pull up. Right. So she got, went out the window on the second floor was on the roof and called the police. Right. But when the police came, he's still in the trunk. They take off on a police chase. They crash, and he dies in the trunk. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, so th- there's that kind of money. And my brother, you know, is rolling in the dough, too. And these guys right. stand right. to be millionaires. They're right. doing so well in real estate, you right. know, mortgage lending or whatever. Right. And back then, and my brother was, like, on that level of Chris Rawlings, you know. Right. And right. they were both football players at one time, and, and they right. knew how to, you know get get the community you know riled up for a game you know or whatever right and, and so his son listened to everything his dad said and put it all into his fantasy into action right he started learning how to draw like my brother the right. difference between my older brother and me is that i put into action by meeting people like eric loach and other people right. my brother as an artist became kind of introverted and okay. never had the confidence, like his son says on all those podcasts and everything, right. that his, his dad is a good artist, but he doesn't right. put stuff out in the public. I like I try to even help him and put stuff on my deviant art. Right. And he didn't he made me take it down. So you got to be uh, opposite introvert if right. you're really going to be respected as an artist. You know, it's you That's can't true. just take it all with you. You know, you have to That's share true. it, you know. And but you know it's like um, well tell me now was was there anything else she said in the Bible was there anything else she said that was interesting that would for the public to know what else what other uh because you had some classes from her what else did um this um noted person in the industry D- Disney film editor had to say she was not only an editor uh, Eric she also was a writer um, okay that uh an accomplished writer that wrote right. uh, and you can see her on the um what are, what are the credits called the i idb I, ibds what are those called those things in hollywood okay. I, I she, she's also listed for other work she's done she right. did um this uh, film on um uh something about i think that that jesus got married or something something the germans right. had cooked up she, right. she or, or or somebody uh, she, she writ, wrote this um film a story about jesus and um, it it was kind of like a a little bit off center you know it wasn't what the western you know thing but it's you know i I understand it did pretty good and uh she 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 uh i I would think that you have to uh what what i think as 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 you know being trained to be a teacher and watching her teach is that you have to have everything organized Mm-hmm. And, and you have to have uh, a, like a, almost a, a, an inventory that is diverse. Okay. You know, when she, when she puts the standards together for us to become teachers, she's going to make sure that you are, have a great background in all diversities of English. Right. She's going to make sure not only that she gives you some of the, you know, the perks that, that are key, like, you know, make sure you put some of the Western literature in there like the bible in in your mm-hmm. in your music or your film story she's going to make sure that that you have training about 
in early English literature, you know, things about uh, literature that that how uh, stories were written, you know, and right. and you know, a lot of them do come from Great Britain and um, right. what they were really about and and um, things that we just take for granted and we really don't know how they were, were created and everything. So she makes sure that diversity is really important. And I think diversity, like if I didn't have some diversity, I don't think I would have had the courage to say, hey, you know, just try a different chord. You know, right. I mean, they there would be people like Robert Merle who um, he's credited for writing the music for If I Knew You Would Come In, I'd Bake the Cake, which was a gold record. We didn't have <laughs> platinums back in the 50s. Yeah. But yeah, he, he made a gold record out of that. And the wow. true story behind that, if I may, yeah. without <laughs> pissing him off, he's probably post-mortem by now. But um, <laughs> he, he told me that he was a page. You know, he told the class that he was a page, right. uh, work, working uh, as a page. And uh, this woman liked him. And right. she said, Robert, I wrote this song and you're such a cool guy. I'm giving you this song. And right. it became a hit. Right. He, he also uh, did the film score or the, uh, wrote the, 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 the film uh, Mahogany. OK. He, but it was during the 60s when there was a lot of anti-Black feelings right. in the right. industry. So. Right. He sold it. I think it was to Barry Gordy or something yeah, like Barry that. Gord, Barry Gordy. Yeah. He, he sold it because he didn't want his name attached to something that would mm -hmm. make him blacklisted for supporting, you know, uh, being against the, the uh, you know, the, the black people at that time. Right. Because right. they were being there. It was probably as similar to the McCarthy era when if right. you were a communist, you were right. put on the chopping block, you know. That's so, true. So Robert, I remember at Loyola Marymount was always kicking himself saying, I wish I would have never have stolen that <laughs> because it's a it, classic. Right? Every, every writer, including my friend Joe de Blasi, a, a music writer uh, right. for, for Charo, him right. and Charo teamed up and she used to be Xavier Kuge's uh, wife, Charo. Right. And by the way, you probably never knew this, but Charo has an identical twin. Okay. You cannot tell them apart. So you imagine if she's got a publicity thing to do, she could send her sister and nobody would know. <laughs> I found out. I, you, could be I found two out. Places at, you could be at two places at the same time. Identical, yeah. So yeah. I found out because when Joe's mother passed away, poor soul, she was the right. most beautiful one. Joe, by the way, Joe de Blasi, like Luvisi, my name ends in I, so does right. his. Uh, we probably come from the same Italian musical people back in Italy because right. when I was in Italy I saw a woman that looked like his and I still do see a lot of people that look like his mother right. but anyways right. she said George I just hope Joe wins a, a Grammy before I die wow. and he came very close because uh Charo almost got a Grammy but she, but she got a Latin CD Grammy that's a little bit right. different than getting I think a Grammy in the United States right but my dream was you know to, to see Mary de Blasi's dream come true but right. Bill, Billy de Blasi is an accomplished drummer and he plays with a group called the Hailers and they're always right. playing in North Hollywood. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, he said, George, don't worry about it. Right. My mother's OK. She's passed away. Right. And Joe did far better than a Grammy. He right. did the solo that lasts quite a few minutes on Pink Floyd's The Wall album. Wow. And I thought, I thought, man, he's right, because right. if you were part of that record album, if your name right. was on it and there was a, uh, a Pink Floyd poster floating around and somebody says, can you sign it? It was instantly worth ten thousand dollars back then. Wow. You know? wow. Yeah. And, and I said, but Joe, because I don't know if you remember Frankenstein, the, the, getting back to what Jody Johnson taught me. Yeah. And, and what you wanted to know about what what valuable you know, gems she had for us as students when she had us read Frankenstein right. and that one sentence or paragraph where it says where she comments on the South being Italy. Right. And that's where I say there's mixed blood. You know, right, right, a lot of right. Italians won't admit it, but they're right. black as black. You know, I mean, right, right. you know, that's why they got those beautiful physiques in the Olympics and the diving competition and everything because they're black. Now, now right. probably I'll be on a hit list now, you know, you know, but, you know. <laughs> but well, I mean, anyways, well, I mean well, let, let's let's put it this way. You have some 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 people in Italy that 
are black, and there's some people that that are white. You get different different groups, like right? Because like, Italy, Italy was a mixing pot, you know. Right. Yeah. But you, Gary, you, give me you back. Like, you like the United States? Some people black, some people white. Different different groups. Yeah. Right. Right. Get, get me back to what why I uh, when I deviated right there. Um, well, let me let, let me ask you this question. This, um, if I'm tell me if I'm wrong, but in Italy, you guys are the one that created um, opera music, right? I think so. I mean, you know, this is really yeah. interesting because Italy, the boot, is really at one time it's just like the British, you know, and and yeah. Arthur, you know, the story of right. Arthur, you know, right. where they they talk about countries don't really have borders, you know, like this right, stupid right. Ukraine thing. Right. Italy was part of Vienna. I mean, there okay. was no borders back then. Right. So look, when you say opera, it wasn't really Italy. It was all of Europe. You know, I mean. They were all a big community. You know, the Habsburgs right. were, were, I think, uh, court in uh, Spain and all that, you know, queen, you know, the queen of Spain and all that. Right. They were right. all mixing. You know, there, right. there wasn't right. probably right. racism back then, you know? Right, right. right. But, and but, then, but, 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 but the, the Vatican is in, is in Italy, right? Rome? Right. Rome? Yeah, it's in yeah. Italy, right in the middle. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean it's, and then you have, who's the great artist um, of... That painted the Sixteen Chapel. Uh, it, it was um, Leonardo and uh, the yeah, other yeah. guy. The, the other guy, uh, Leonardo, and who's the other one? Uh, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci. And, yeah. So you have. It, I mean, you have a great history. Italy has a fascinating great history. But look at my last name, Eric Luvisi. Yeah. Yeah, it means like the vista, the sight. VC means in Latin the the the, the vision, the, okay. the sight. Okay. Well, this is going to blow you away since you like this kind of stuff more than yeah. me. Yeah. Luvisi, actually, there was a pope with the last name Luduvisi. Can okay. you believe that? Just the D U is the only difference in the whole name. Yeah. And he comes from Bologna, where my right near my relatives in Pisa and Verciano and yeah. um, and and Bergamo, where all those people died of COVID and all that. Yeah. It's right next to Switzerland and everything. Okay. It's not that there you have it. I mean, it, it, one of my best friends um was from Italy that was in high school with me and stuff like that. I mean, very nice guy. I mean, yeah, you got great history in it. I mean, old great history in, in Italy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so Ludovici actually knew um, right. what they call the Pope right now. He's really what they would call if he was the Jesuit head, which right. I think he was at one time, that would be the Black Pope, head of the Jesuits. Okay. Right. But the Jesuits were just starting in Italy at the time Ludovici right. uh, met him, met um, uh, Xavier Loyola. Right. And so really, this pope is not the first pope. Right. My possible relative was the first pope. Because there you go. Alejandro Ludovici became Pope Gregory the 15th. He was the okay. only pope that was friendly to Galileo okay. because there the next go. pope put him in jail. Okay, what? There you have all this history, all this great <laughs> history. <laughs> now we get into the great history. Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. So you were saying, we, I want to go back now. You were saying, because I mean, I think if I could be wrong, but I think that in Italy, you guys did create opera. I think you did. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I mean, that, and that's a great art form. And what, you know, what always comes to my mind about opera, what would happen if you mix opera and rock and roll together? And you, and I want to I, great question. What, what, about, I, I, what about Queen? Queen, and did he do that? Yeah, yeah, but I was going to do it before Queen. Ask okay. Joe de Blasi. I, I, okay, okay, a little bit slightly different right. a deviation from what you're saying, but you're right on the money. That's the yeah. way my fertile imagination works. I yeah. wanted to take Gregorian music, right, which is a little bit kind of like uh, opera in the sense that these uh, monks, they vocalize Right. And strong power chords, right. these wonderful melodies. And right. I said, Joe, oh, wouldn't it be great if right. all of a sudden we go from Gregorian and then you start playing like, like your friend uh, Joe Satriani? You know, I think he would visit Joe's house all the time. And but yeah. Joe would call him a hack because Joe was right. trained to do that, but right. in classical form, more pure. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, Joe, wouldn't that be great to have Gregorian break into some rock and roll guitar yeah. riffs yeah. that are unbelievable speed you know of and, doing and, like six tepalets you know and you could and you could do the rock and roll and then in the in the in the bridge could go right back into the Gulgarian uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 
I, I don't know how to do it, but I mean, the, the sound, but, but I can I can imagine something interesting. Would hopefully, be hopefully this interview will inspire people to go in that direction, because I always felt it was possible. I was always I, thinking I, I want to inspire you to go in that direction. You know, because I wanted that kind of stuff, you know, to be like the the, the, the go between or the, yeah. you know, the 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 the, the, the uh, originator kind of person. Like when Joe was on the road with Paul Anka, who wrote over 100 gold records, I guess, to yeah. his name. I wanted Joe to take advantage of that situation yeah. and maybe cross over to Latin music because yeah. Latin we're talking we're talking a population almost equivalent to India or China. And when you put together all of South America and all of Europe's um, uh, Spanish speaking yeah. world, and, you're, you're and in the and, billions. And rock and roll is big. In, in, and I had some Latin friends when I was li used to live in New York. Rock and roll is big. In, 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 um, in, in South America. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think there's a great market. So I wanted Joe to be a crossover. And guess right. what happened? The I irony of, of life happens. Yeah. Paul Anka decides, he publicly, you can look this up if you don't believe me, and, and you can talk to Joe if you don't believe me, that I, that I offered it before it happened historically, right. is that he wanted to team up with Juan Gabriel, who was the Elvis Presley of Latin America. Okay. He produced more songs than Elvis and sold more records than Elvis. So if wow. you combine Paul Anka with his 100 gold records yes. to somebody of Latin America, like uh, Jalisco, Mexico, where my relatives from my mother's side came right. from, right. if you put uh, Juan Gabriel, who did the famous song Amor Eternal for the Spanish singer, yeah. um, Rosia Durko, that that's a, a no brainer. If you go to a, a Mexican American party or a quinceanera in California, right. if you mention that song, you've won everybody over instantly. Wow. But that, yeah. And, and, and I wanted to bring the two worlds together right. and it, it never happened, you know, and okay. Joe could have been that go between because of his fame already, right. you know, was starting because he was a session player for television for Linda okay. Carter and, and her show, well, I guess it was okay. called Wonder Woman or Bionic Woman. Oh, yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah, and then the other one he did was Dukes of Hazard. He was okay. a session player. That's and a big was, show. That's yeah. a huge and, show. Yeah. And he was the youngest, youngest guitar player, I think. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can do some research. He yeah. was the youngest guitar player of the Wrecking Crew, who's okay. the ones that behind the Beach Boys, Sinatra, Elvis, uh, Nat, Nat King Cole, everybody that played in there, he, right. he was like the youngest guy in that group. Wow. Go, going to Tommy Tedesco's house, uh, uh, you know, and being with those guys. So Tommy took him under his wing. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and Queen had, had kind of something going on with, with, with um, and I think also the Beatles had a classical because George, um, George Martin had a classical background, you know, with music. The, right. the, produ the producer for the Beatles. Okay. You know, the first producer, that, that Simon. Right, right. Right, right. I, I think uh, I was watching a documentary on him. I think I remember that, that uh, he was pretty, pretty smart guy, you know, to begin with. Yeah. I and saw something I, in the book that was kind of, I don't know if this is true. This could be a rumor, but they <laughs> I had this book out in New York at the library and they talked about different um, rock guys and James Brown, a couple of different other people and stuff. And they said that the guy, they said that, okay, that the Beatles came to, to meet George Martin and he was trying to decide, you know, who he wanted to sign, for, I guess for BMI or something. And one of the guys said, I don't like your tie. <laughs> something like that. And just for that weird reason, George Martin, Martin signed the Beatles. Wow. Weird, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. and they went on to become one of the the top, you know, one of the top, if not the top, rock group of of all time. Right, right. I always think it's kind of interesting that James Taylor, which shows that somehow those circles of wealth in New York yeah. sometimes have something to do with these people getting a head start. It's kind yeah. of interesting how uh, you had um, uh, James Taylor right. at Apple Records, okay. but mind you. Ed DeJoy went yeah. to Apple Records to record El Stuart in the Year of the Cat, and that went platinum. Okay. I mean, wow. that song, the reason why it didn't become historically as pinnacle as it could have been, even though everybody would love platinum, right? Oh, yeah. Is exactly. because they were having the big record uh, uh, contract wars of the okay. 70s, the late okay. 70s, early 80s. 
where he was with Janice Records and we were like a little tiny, uh, like maybe a mole on the graph of these gigantic uh, buildings like skyscrapers on the, on the bar graph. Right. And uh, we, we were barely recognizable on the graph. And here we were doing a platinum right off right. out of the starting gate with, with, with uh, Al Stewart and the Year of the Cat. Right. And, right. and so Ed was like, like I said, so famous in all the, the trade magazines. Right. And, uh, yeah. And so um, who, if Ed hadn't been, you know, distracted by all the contract wars back then, where the yeah. lawyers could just or the the wealthy companies had such big, powerful lawyers like right. RCA Records. I don't know. If, uh, don't quote me on it, but right. they were so big. Right. Uh, like like uh, Atlantic Records or something could come in just right. hypothetical, you know, just use right. Atlantic. Right. They right. could steal Al Stewart from us. And we they'd say, go see you in court. And they would laugh. Wow. And we had a contract that said, no, you can't do that. So Ed, with his photographic mind, when I think RCA uh, had some sort of situation with maybe Janus Records or, a, or another record company, Ed, Ed was a GRT Records. Uh, Ed was deposed for three days with attorneys, you know, trying to uh, grab whatever they could uh, from this record company to that record company. And he, he, I mean, you had to have a photographic mind because right. you're handling the value of this platinum star and right. who's going to, who's going to end up with who. Right. So, and Ed, Ed ended up working for RCA records as a vice president under the top. Remember um, Chet Atkins, I think it was his name. Or, yeah. It was Chet Atkins, right. The guitar player famous. Yeah. And he was the president and Ed was the vice president. So, so, um, so did you you work for some of these record labels? Just I, I worked for Janus Records uh, uh, under a guy named Howard. Okay. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of Howard's last name. Howard. It was just I'm telling you, it was just like uh, the red carpet treatment because so, I knew so, it. So, it so, so, so here we go. We're going to do a cliffhanger. We're going to finish it. We're going to stop here. And they're gonna have to wait to the next time. Okay. <laughs> I love to do this to them. Yeah. They have to wait to the next time. We're gonna talk more, and we're gonna talk about um um the Exodus or whatever. That oh yeah, they, Ex so, so, Exorcist. Exodus, Exorcist, Exorcist. So right. Exorcist, yes. So people go out there and, and and go look up his profile and read about that. And I want you to do a little bit of homework and. Go find out about his and and we can say at this time popular song on LinkedIn and hear that hear that song and yeah why not go ahead and subscribe and like that song as well but um we're gonna talk about him working for is it Janice Records yes yeah. Janice Records Janice Records and we're gonna talk about the Exorcist and uh, we're really gonna get into some more stuff we just we just we're just cooking and we're just getting started and um. So tell them where they, where they, tell us about the song real quickly and tell us where they can find you to, um, to learn more ab about you because you're definitely a, a man of great, great knowledge and wisdom. Go ahead. You would just, uh, uh, my name, G-E-O-R-G-E, -E, George. And then uh, you can figure out my last name by a little kind, kind of uh, a metaphor for an acronym would be Love is I, just loves diapers with an I on both sides of the S on loves. So it'd be like love, L-U-V, is the verb, and I, the pronoun, you could put that, George, love is I, into the search on YouTube, and you'll see some cover songs, and you'll see, can you take the time, can you take the time, has it maybe an Asian type of looking woman that's my artwork that I did, um, wow. and uh, I used to draw and take a lot of art classes and I, I actually you know one of the topics could be something about chore 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 choreography and how taking dance classes can expand your writing potential I feel too. Well let me just say this and pardon for a second and um, people out there other people that are artists um, there was a young lady I've interviewed I think she took me up on what I was saying that's in Canada. Um, right now what's very very I guess the trend thing, the big thing is the NFTs. You heard about those? Uh-uh. Well, it's, look them up. The NFTs, people are doing like digital arts. 
you know, they're, oh. they're growing pictures or whatever, which I'm, I'm sure that you're capable of doing. And and because when you said the artwork, and that artwork is very good that you did for, for oh, the, thank for you. the record. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so may, maybe you want to do something there and people are making millions of dollars. And it's right. kind of a crypto thing, a cryptocurrency thing. Right, but, right. Now, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've NFT. been approached, I've been approached by a guy. That that says he he can um, you know do some of that for me, and yeah. uh, it, it, he talks about cryptocurrency and and then right. the art world that you can have your own you know um, website and yeah. it'll be all crypto and right. and explain to me Eric what what exactly is that about I mean is there money involved in that or yeah. how is the money well I'm hearing that the NFTs there's non fungible forget non-fungible no. something tangible something non-fungible something yeah. okay yeah but that's, that's enough it's, yeah yeah it's about art it's, it's but it's saying non-fungible they just mean that it's uh it is it's unique it's, it doesn't have it's it's you can't it's not like dollars it's it's unique it's, it's unique it's special so what's happening is that people are creating these art pieces and these top very wealthy individuals and um it's from from football to basketball players. I know basketball players are paying like a million, two million for for pieces ah. of this art. So the the very wealthy are buying these pieces of um unique art. So I'm just saying, I saw your piece. I didn't know that you did that. You just told us that. That's another you know thing you know I I, I, you I have I to have break a... some of those and um. And sell some of them and start a record company. Why not? Yeah, you know, I think you're onto something really big here because there's been this guy on LinkedIn that's really, really good at that stuff. And right. he's always displaying them on the homepage. And right. I, I, di I didn't know what it was exactly until you explained it, that it's a, it's a product that's a exclusive, maybe mutually exclusive to just the wealthy, you know, that they have the money to help these artists. But at the same time, it's their own, the little thing that they can show show off you know that they right. own like a bitcoin they own this thing that's unique right yeah and well, they're, paying, hear... they're paying millions they're paying uh you know like like um maybe two hundred thousand to like two three four five million dollars you know i could be wrong but i think for a piece of the of of your artwork yeah and yeah so 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 i definitely advise you and people out there but you we're talking to you right now to look into that kind of research that and get involved with that because you definitely have the talent i mean that piece of i didn't know that you did i mean it's an interview you, you start talking i didn't know that you did that artwork that is that is yeah. amazing work that you did yeah well i used some special effects after i did the drawing you know but yeah. um they, they have like little uh routines you know, program routines that can tweak your artwork and and do this and that but uh, joe de blasi was like you he he saw me just scribble uh, a little female's face you know just yeah. quickly draw something and i i showed it to him and he says this is this is your your game forget guitar now and start drawing he's like <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait here we go here like my background is um music um books um getting into film uh and then you know business is also my background as well for school but but as well so so i just see for you that that um you probably should start a entertainment company llc i actually have one um and um include art and music under that oh, could, 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 could i could i just piggyback with you and we could call it the eric loach since your last name begins with no, no, l no, no no this is this is your well for you you had that that yeah. daughter that oh, okay. you want to be that that, yeah. that you, you want to be successful so this is this is your, your with, with the art and, right. with, and with the music and um i think that right. you, uh, you you love music probably as much as i do or more so what i'm saying is that I'm, the idea that I'm sharing is that that you get you find out how to get that artwork that you do, I mean, and create that artwork, whatever, because you're able to do it, sell some of that stuff. I'm just it's an idea, just a thought and make these millions, which you can do, and then open up, a, you know, a big studio, whatever, and uh, sign whatever artist you want to sign. And 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 the, the music would be the side thing, our, our big thing. But but the, but the driver is the art. And all of it's under this umbrella, and and 
you leave this big fortune for your for your daughter and stuff. But at the same time, you you why not go to Italy and, and draw a piece? Why not, you know, once you have to make all this money, why not record in Italy? Why not record in Spain? Enjoy your life. Right, right. Hey, Eric, my 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 ID for Deviant Art, where you can see probably over close to a thousand art pieces that I did, including photographs that I took in Italy. Right. It, would, it would be G-E-O, and then my uh, I think it's just G-E-O, my, my last name, G-E-O, right. G -E -O, love is I, all one word, and that'll right. take you to to um, my all my artwork on Deviant Art. Yeah, well, what, what I want you to do is like when we get off or whatever, but you stay on for a second and you will give me the, you know, send me email wise, you'll send me what you, what links you want people to have in the in the video and hopefully okay. this video can help they see the video and um, a lot of people know you more people know you than they know me and 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 they will go to the video watch the video or whatever and go to the links and see the artwork and, and see the music and it's just kind of an advertisement thing for you wow that would be great i appreciate that eric right so definitely yeah. check into the nf the um, NFTs and the other people out there, you do art as well, but you need to, there, now there's two reasons. There are two reason people to go and listen to this song. That's really, it's a really good song um, and you have to support him and and look at the artwork as well. This guy is, is multi-talented. Yeah. I mean, and, and you listen to him <laughs> talk this guy is, is basically a genius. I mean, I mean, he, he, he does he does school teaching or whatever. And they were, you know, they were offended because he was great as a school teacher. That's all that was. And then then then, then he, he he's been trained in TV and film, and naturally he, he's an art, you know, he's a he's a musician, uh, uh, artist, and and creates songs and um, work for a which we'll talk next time for a record label. Um, you know, he was in the business, people. Okay, and 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 then also um, is a great artist. So this just we, we're just kind of just pulling peeling back the layers, and it, it's funny. It's ironic. The nice guy on LinkedIn that is app appalling. Uh, you know, uh, appalling. And we're not part. Let me get it right. Uh, um, celebrating. Let me just say because I couldn't get that out right. Uh, celebrating everybody else. Maybe one of the most talented people on LinkedIn. Isn't that fun? Isn't that ironic? The guy that's, you know, you I send a video up every time this guy said, you know, says something kind. Whoever's out there, he said that kind to everybody. But he may actually be the most talented person, one of the most talented individuals on in the community that I'm in in LinkedIn. Who would know? We yeah, just, we just, yeah. Yeah. I don't see what you and Ed DeJoy see about me. Maybe it's just part of when you're talented, you're too humble because it takes so much work that you don't have time to brag. And you you and Ed DeJoy like seem to know something that I don't even know because I'm too busy, like you said, uh, being diverse to know. Yeah. Diversity maybe is yeah. the key to what Jody Johnson was all about. But there was one thing, do you remember what it was that I said was another gem and I was about to say it, but then uh, my creative fertile I can, I can, imagination. I have to throw this because I think this will be positive for you as well. Um, I remember watching something about Anthony Quinn and Anthony Quinn is half Irish and ha half Mexican. Right. Anthony Quinn. Right. I know yeah, that. The, yeah. The great actor. And he was also, uh, he, 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 was a sculpture. He sculpt, he sculpt, you know, he created the, right. these these things. And I'm not, you know, my pronunciation may not be correct there. But but anyway, when he was not acting, all of these actors and directors and people would buy his his artwork. And mm -hmm. I remember him saying that, you know, he just wrote wrote it off as, you know, that I created these 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 um these monuments or whatever I created the these statues and it's just hard work. That's what he said. He said, it's just hard work. But when you look at it, they're master, they were masterpieces. You know what I mean? Right. And so that kind of funded him during the times he was not acting. He was a great actor, by the way. And we have to add this, we have to close this with this, that, and I always tell people about this because I, I, I'm a big fan of his, um, he passed away. But he said that he trained in Europe, in England to be an actor and their philosophy over there that the artist is the person that 
is the most important person in the whole society. And it's kind of wow. like the artist, what, people would watch the films or they would watch your art piece or just listen to your music or whatever your talent would be in terms of the arts. And that would inspire the brick layer to, to lay the bricks correctly. Or that would inspire the doctor to treat his patients, you know, use his education and really service the patient or the, the lawyer to service 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 his client and that the artist was the most important person in society. Wow. But he, said, he said in the United States, it was kind of like, they looked at people as celebrities and you're getting money and oh, okay, you're just a, you're just a guy that's getting all this money, you, you're talented, but you know, it's not viewed in the same light. But he said in Europe that in England, that that is the way artists are revered. And, and that's, you know, with all this talent and you're so humble, but all this talent, that's how I see you as, as somebody that's very important. And now it's even beyond this, this nice um, community personality to support other people, but you're quite the talent yourself in various areas. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention, if it's okay, yeah, the sure. Jody Johnson uh, thing that you were um, spot on about, uh, the, the gifts that she gave were like, when, when you're writing something on LinkedIn, whether it be just a message to you or right. something like that, the more that you know the rules of grammar and stuff like that, or right. the little things you get in an, an English class, the more you're able to, to feel confident and other people re respect that confidence when you, you know, put a parenthesis correctly or uh, with the, the dot, dot, dot and, and make a quote and you do it properly so right. that you don't injure the writer. If you do it right. incorrectly, something as simple as that can, can just um, ruin your whole career because you're, yeah, you're, you're like, you're like false, uh, falsely representing a statement by somebody else, but she gave us the tools in class so right. we would never right. make that mistake. Okay, okay, absolutely. And let me say this because I think that you may go on to 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 write a couple books and it'll get it'll get you. I um, wish maybe if you're the manager publisher, I'll do it. Well, well I know some, some people, but it, it'll probably happen. The, the thing that I would say about the books, because I'm not the best grammatically sometimes or whatever, but what it is, I you, what it happens when you write a book and you see all these athletes with these books, and you're like, how does how does this guy pull this off? Or celebrities. Well, what happens is you have a copyright editor who is an expert, he or she, at the grammatical part of it and at the phrasing part for readers to like that's comfortable for readers. So you okay. so the part is that you get a you write your thoughts down and this is chapter one, chapter two. Okay, you do what you can do with it. Then you pass it on to this copyright editor who's who's probably like a who's not but is like the equivalent of a PhD in English type. Person. Yeah, like Joe, like Jody Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. And they help you, but you have to be careful because what happened is the editor will get excited <laughs> and, yeah. and and wants to write. And you're like, oh, wait, yeah. wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. I'm the author, not you. Not yeah, yeah. And so you have to be, you know, you can they get excited and they, but you have to kind of make okay, I, I still want to say it this way. Make sure it's gra grammatically gr grammatically. Correct, grammatically yeah. correct, but you know what I'm saying. But I wrote the thing, so let's follow yeah. follow my lead. That's the thing I'm saying. So I'm saying yeah. that you, you you can definitely do that as well. Hey, are you going to do any segments on originality versus uh, over um, overworking songs? Because LinkedIn's really uh, hip on on uh, these uh, tutorials, and they told me in a tutorial not to do add extra tracks of extra musician. Um, uh, instruments to my song and stuff like that. And it's, it's more of an algorithm. And, and I, th I think that's right. I think we've gotten away from original uh, music and maybe right. th this should be like an underground, um, maybe you can do a future underground uh, podcast on right. original stuff that isn't overworked, that is simple, that gets the right. job done, gets the emotions you know, of love going or, or uh, right. you know, entertainment going. And without having a 700 tracks on it, you know? Right, right. I think it's whatever, I think is that approach works, but I'm saying, I think music, um, if you're not trying to make it commercial for commercial purposes, you just make it for that you love it. If you're doing commercial, you want to sell it, then you may have to follow some some, uh, some okay. guidelines to, to, okay, well, I really want to, and in a commercial, 
right now I'm writing something for Macy Gray and maybe um, looking at Justin Bieber, some stuff. So, but but I'm just I'm just saying that's commercial, okay? Okay. But I'm just saying, if you just want to do it for the love, which you have the passion and love for, then you just like you said, you created your own style of writing, and just write the way you you feel you want to write it. So and and but I think you have the ability to do it both ways. You can do a commercial. Okay, this is gonna pass the smell test. Okay, they can accept this. And hey, they think they think it's great. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and, and then you write it. Just another piece. You know, I have songs with like cuss words in them, but then yeah. I'm a Christian, so right. I can't re because of my faith. I can't release that. You know what I'm saying? I can't yeah. release that. But but I mean, like if somebody came over for a party, you know, I might share a little bit of of this. Yeah. Thing. That, that will never be released to the public, but you know, made right. to a group of four or five, yeah. Well, then that, that, that shows uh, how honorable of a human being you are, Eric, and I really appreciate that. I, I, just by your writing style and everything, you know, you, you just seem like a high level person that won't try to pollute the market and destroy children growing up. You sound like a decent, real decent human being, you know, just by your- I just try to make inspiring songs and stuff like that. But again, I mean, I like your song. I think uh, it kind of remind me, it, it, take this as a compliment, as a, Beeble, a Beatles, excuse me, a Beatles type of feel, which is for you to, for anybody to pull that off is great. Yeah. That is, I mean, you know what I mean? That's one of my favorite rock groups. I, and I have to say the Beach Boys, my, because I have a, a friend, that's that um, we do music sometimes, especially in New York. That's the nephew of the Beach Boys. So I have to, <laughs> the, Be the Beach Boys and the Beatles are really, I mean, those are one of my, some of my top, and then Rolling Stones, yeah. or whatever, um, some of my top uh, rock groups. Is, is, there, is there a favorite part in my song that, that inspires you? Like for me, I, uh, my own favorite part mm -hmm. uh, is when I'm doing like the instrumental. And I think I, I, I almost like, give the the listener the feeling that i'm gonna jump into another dimension by throwing right. like a passing chord right. that, that that was probably a mistake but because you're improvising almost when you're in the studio trying to to, right. to to get it all done and then my guitar teacher of the past said no leave it that way and i'm like going but maybe some musical genius to say it's it's not musically correct you know and what, then what? Well, let, let me tell you, I, I, my, who I was taught by, I was taught by a gentleman, um, Mark Carter from New York, um, who's originally from Maryland, but was in, from New York, basically, you can say, that was a Jewish guy, um, real name Maynard Cohen. But, but what it, but, uh, you know, but he wrote for Twisted Sister, okay? And um, I would be in the studio with him all the time, because I kind of, was an agent or whatever with him and stuff like that. And um, he he would always say that, that thank God for mistakes. <laughs> thank God for everything. <laughs> and you can put it together. Yeah. And I've read yeah. that in some books too. And I remember another one book, there were, this was this rock, famous, I can't remember who they were, a famous rock group that were producing a song and they were at the end of the song and they just couldn't figure out how to end, how to end it. And they just, had the TV on, turned the TV on, and they heard something. Okay, this is what we're going to put in there. So it, it's it's just uh, writing the song can be so organic, and so so you never know what's going to happen. Long as, long as it works. And what he yeah. always told me from songwriting, he's a great songwriter. He said it doesn't have to be the best. And I'm not saying your song or my song or whatever for anybody that's a songwriter. It doesn't have to be the best words. Long right. as it works, long as, as it and it makes sense and it's not off center to where it's, you know, it hurts people's ears. It just just makes sense and you just kind of just let it come together that way. I, I think I think we're very unified. If you do consider me a white person, I think yes. the white person of me um, intermingling with white women when I'm singing. Cause you know, singing is yeah. like a, a yeah. bird lullaby. It's a bird right. singing to another bird and attraction and all that. I've had right. equal amount of women, black women and white women right. take to my, that song, Can You Take the Time? And I, I really feel that, you know, um, just uh, there, has, there has not been like 
only white people that like it. It's right. just like, I'm, I'm really pleased that the beautiful black women like it. And yeah. there's, there's, there's one woman on LinkedIn right now that I've been promoting in my last article. Right. I think it was a, at least in my last, last two or three. Right. And I put her in and it's, I think she's on Spotify and okay. she's really hot looking too. And like, okay. uh, it's just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's in the mix that I'll ever get to date a you know, black woman continuously for a while because <laughs> I've met them at parties, but it, yeah. it's, it's just, there'll be some white dude that comes in and, and throws a wedge in between us or something, you know? Oh, or, just, 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 as, you know, just, I, I, I think I better, I better be politically, Correct. Politically, yeah. politically correct. Politically correct. Um, women in general, I just think I had to be careful with this. I think, our, uh, yeah, just between a man and a woman. Yeah, let me take you out to um, for lunch or take you out to dinner, and let's. It, I, I want to know more about you and and tell you and let you get to know about me. Just simple like that, and just see where it goes. Right, right. People compare me to Willie Nelson and the original side, you know, that he's kind yeah. of rough and, and, and yeah. raw, you know, right. and uh, I, I, I kind of take it as a compliment. And uh, right, right. but, you know, it's just, uh, just I'm like, wondering yeah, if just, I'm on just, par. Just, just ask. Look, look, I mean, you know, man to woman and I, I, everybody. I mean, if, if a woman asks me out and say, well, let me take out to dinner. I'm not, I probably won't turn it down. God, I, I hope I get that lucky, you know, <laughs> because, you know, I, 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 I would go out just to find out why she asked me out in the first place. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, I, I look forward to some of these black women that I've met on LinkedIn, hopefully someday, uh, you know, like the, like the, the, the girls and the music uh, uh, CD in Vogue. Okay, uh, in Vogue. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, there have been some girls on LinkedIn that sound that good. Right. And uh, I'm just wondering if uh, if they're married, you know, that's always right. been a, a thing. Yeah. If they're married, then it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, too bad, you know, for yeah, me, you know. But right. yeah, but I, I hope someday that. Yeah, yeah. Just just if you see somebody, you feel that they're single or whatever and you're attracted to them and you, them, and the connection may be that in the arts, you both are in the arts. So that's a positive. So. um yeah, just just ask, and you know, I would love to carry out to eat or something, and let's just get the the talk. I mean, you know, all these with COVID going on. I mean, it's starting to go down, and it, and I've been, and so now I want to get back out, and I think you'll be a nice, uh, a nice, a, a, a nice person to, to take out and just kind of spend. You know, you eat and I eat, and just talk and just and just go from there. You know, I found that I was in during the COVID thing. I was going to church um, services um, through Zoom, right? And and I found so many beautiful women that could sing right. that I didn't know that that well, there were that many out there that come through the church, right? You know, like 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 when I was um, going to see Joe De Blasi play for the Colors of Christmas tour with Pebo, right? And, uh, and those people, you know, um, after the words in the green room and this and right. that, these gospel singers that they take on tour with them are just right. incredibly talented. And right. I just, I think that- Are, are you a music a, producer? No, but but I'm just saying that okay, okay. Hang, hanging out with these different yeah. people and getting to, you know, to get into the green room afterwards and, and watching what's going on behind the scenes. Right. It, it, like, like for instance, there was a guy, uh, I was playing at an open mic and he gave me tickets because right. he couldn't go. So he, he airmailed them from uh, the Virgin Islands to, right. to me right. to go to the Soul Train Awards Festival at the Santa Monica Civic Theater. Okay. And, and Peebo was there. Okay. And I, was, I was in a line with all these black people and I was like right. looking around, is there anybody white here? And nobody. Yeah. I was the only white guy. And... Uh, and uh, and so basically after the show was over i was as high as a kite and i was thinking my friend in the virgin islands he's black right i said god thank god he sent me these tickets i mean yeah. nothing nothing went wrong i mean everything yeah. the people were beautiful right and then once you know it eric on the way home a guy uh we had like a fender bender right and i pulled over 
was totally safer than uh, being right. in heaven at the right. Santa Monica Civic with all black people. Right. And this white guy punch sucker punches me and it hits my ear so hard. Well, that, what was that about? Because uh, when, when I got out of the car, okay, we had a fender bender on right. the Santa Monica freeway. So yeah. I pull over, you know, where Ennis Cosby uh, was shot or whatever. I think it was around that area going okay. up the hill. Yeah. And I pull over before you get to that side of the hill, I think on the other side. Yeah. And I pull over to see if I if I scratch his car or his van. Right. right. And I said, like, well, why didn't you let me go? You know, why did you have to take your van and like yeah. squeeze me off the off ramp on ramp? Yeah. And he sucker punched me and I didn't even see it coming. And wow. he, he hit my I, th I think right here you can see it. There's a little okay. bit of a of a formation or something that never went away. Right. But I'm sitting there in Kaiser and Woodland Hills and the whole night they're trying to say, cause the ear got really big. Like you see right. those Uf UFC fights. Right. They were just trying to decide whether or not they wanted to lance it to let pressure off or right. just let it maybe go back to normal on its own. Right. And in the meantime, there was a guy next to me and he dies of a heart attack. And I'm like going, Whoa. And, and the nurses are saying, where's the heart attack kit? Where's the kit for, you know, when people have heart attacks right. uh, and who was supposed to put it together? There's nothing in here that we need. Right. to. And I'm like going, yeah. this is amazing. I see the whole spectrum of life in 24 hours. Wow. I go and and spend the whole night just about with black people and what right. was safer than being in the Vatican. And right. then the next minute I'm almost being murdered by a white guy, you know? <laughs> um, like I said, there's like, good. There's it was good heaven and hell, people. heaven yeah. and hell in 24 hours. And then a guy dies in the end. So oh, I'm like, going, what is going on in life? You know, I mean, yeah. what, what is happening here? I, I just, it really mucked up a beautiful night, you know, to have that guy punch me. Yeah, that's, that was great. That and you know, the highway great. patrol, I call them on the thing and, and they, they said, they said, well, we'll try to find him, but you know, I doubt, yeah. I don't think they ever did. But right. he, he, I just remember he, he was like wearing really tight Levi's and it was about <laughs> at least six feet or above. Right. And he, he just got a good punch in. I mean, wow. I, I literally sank to my knees and yeah. I was I, I thought, wow, you know, I was almost knocked yeah. out. Yeah. But then, then I thought, you know, wow, you know, uh, do I want to fight back? You know, and I, I guess not, you know, because I, 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 when you almost go to your knees. Yeah. You're, you're thinking, you're second guessing yourself at that time. You know, will I have enough strength to fight back? You know, some of the sucker punches is not probably a very good fighter. That's why they're sucker, sucker punching, you know? Yeah, well, you, you did the right thing. The guy was just, a, you know, you, and as we said before, you have good black people, bad black people, good yeah. white people, bad <laughs> white people. It, it just, it just, it just one of those off, it, some, and sometimes you can have an off day or off night. I know one time I was in New York, it, one day, everything went wrong. And then I went to this to get this job. And I think the guy did give me the job, but it was like, he was from South Carolina. And it was like, yeah, you know, sometime you have an off day. So that whole day was just terrible. I think it even yeah. rained. It, 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 and the next day I had a beautiful day. So sometimes you just have an off, you can have an off night, it happens. You know, at least I got to tell Peebo about Joe de Blasi because Joe was playing guitar for him at the time. Yeah, and I yeah. said, I said, Joe used to give guitar lessons for free to people like me. And yeah, and if yeah. they were really poor, he'd give them a guitar, you know, to yeah, help them yeah. with their lessons. And I I said that to me deserves some sort of promotion uh, and, and, and passing the the uh, the observation to somebody like people who knows everybody. You know, I mean, he's phenomenal, you know. And, and what, what did he say? What did he say? He was just just really super nice he was just like taking it all in and listening very carefully yeah and and then you can only tell like an algebraic equation uh right. when 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 you plug in your your numbers and the equation stays balanced you, yeah. and nothing goes haywire yeah you know yeah. by the product that joe did better and better and better that Peebo must have been listening you know because the that's what i said in one of my 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 articles oh, so is you, that, think, you think that the, it's possible that the conversation kind of um was helpful to him i think you know, so I, I think yeah i think i think these people are so humble they're right. not going to say well i'm going to go tell you know help joe because i didn't i didn't know this about him and it's right, phenomenal right. they right. they just go do it because you know in religion don't they right. say don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing i honestly right. feel Peebo uh helped him right in right. next concerts you know 
He might have right. said something as simple. I talked to your friend, George. Right. You know, that was real nice of you to help him. Right. You know, I right. want you to play at the next next Colors of Christmas tour, you know, with us, you know. Yeah. So I really think that's the way they work. I don't think they go broadcasting it. I think. Right. It's all and, he may, of, and he may have never told him. He just, yeah. just out, out of kind of his heart, just helped him and never, but knew that about him. Yeah, and, and, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think because you know, I can only see the end result that Joe has done better and better each time he played at those concerts. So yeah. uh, there's there's something about about that, you know, and he became really good friends with Lolita Adams, who does get get here anyhow, right. on a fast train or on a balloon, get here. And I, I, and I'm I, talking about. Yeah, see, there, there we go. Um, and I think we're in it here. But there we go again. There, there, you, there you are. You said you got it from your father helping someone and yeah. and and it helps and even when you say nice things on the linkedin as you do or smile or thumbs up or thank you or whatever the, the different things you say you don't really know how that makes someone's day you really you know what i'm saying right. you don't know that that maybe they were feeling bad that day or maybe they weren't getting as many views as they wanted for whatever they were doing or you know but just by somebody you know saying thanks or uh, uh, smiley face or uh, thumbs up that may inspire them to continue onward and then later they actually become very good at what they're doing or become more successful as well so so i, you can, I think you contribute to a lot of people's success I'm so, I'm so glad too that you remind me of the black people that have yeah. been so accommodating and, and put up with me like natalie cole i saw her at the uh uh what is it the um the the uh they have a, a venue out there by Long Beach. I forget right. what the, it's like the the uh, Sa Santa Monica Civic Center. They have one to the Cerrito Center. I saw Natalie with Joe playing there and and uh, yeah, I'm glad I got to see her before she passed away, you know? Right. Yeah. I just missed it. And that was with my friend, um, uh, the, the guy that taught me songwriting, um, um, I was telling you about that wrote for Twisted Sister. We missed a concert in, at um i think asbury park new jersey we both lived in new york at the time and we missed james brown oh, oh god so sad. I, I know been, i know been... i know one of his guitar players i was at a at a party yeah uh, at a friend's house my right. friend was having this party for right. everybody at our church right. and he goes you want to go across the street i know james brown's guitar player and wow. this white guy comes yeah. out a short white guy yeah. And he, he's the president of Hot Rod Magazine or something. And wow. but he also plays guitar for James Brown. And I'm like going, <laughs> unbelievable. It, unbelievable. It was in uh, the, the village, uh, Sher uh, Sherwood <laughs> Forest Village is where this guy lived, you know, with my friend. Wow. Yeah, and, yeah I know. <laughs> you got so many stories. So we, 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 we'll, be, we'll be on here all day. Yeah. It's like we can, yeah. so, so we're going to end it. But definitely check into the NFTs. Um, no, because I think you have the ability with the artwork to really do make a lot of money there and, yeah. and really get your art out. Well, and, I, um, I tried talking to the guy that does NFTs that's on LinkedIn. Right. I, I'll, I'll send you his link. Yeah. But um, I don't understand his language. I mean, I can relate because I was trying to learn, uh, learn a little bit of, of um, coding and computer language and all that. Right. Right. And those guys probably are in a different world because when right. I try to talk to him, he's like, like so into it that he's right. telling me he, he lost basically so much devoting all of his resources to what he does. Right. But now he says the big people want to take from him what he has now because right. they see how valuable it is. But he says right. he's got so many uh, passwords and codes that even if they try to steal it, they won't know how to get in and out. You know, it's right. A, right. But, but I don't know. You sound like you're um, closer to knowing how to approach this guy and maybe he can help me like you said once you well, get to know him yeah maybe and i would just say that well check read a little bit on a, on the internet and maybe your daughter can probably could the younger people as you know um find out more about the nfts and then right. get, in, get involved with it okay let's, that's let's gonna... end this, we're going to end the show because we have so much more to talk about another right. time and we're going to get this video out in good time so okay. we're going to end this show um be sure everybody and I'll talk back with talk. You you stay. Don't don't go anywhere. Don't go. You you, okay. you, you stay. But 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 um, we're gonna um, end the show. And um, he'll have some of his link information. And if there's anybody out there that's a 
NFT expert or somebody like that, um, definitely reach out to him and talk to him. He's very talented with the art. And then of course, with the music, we know that. Um, and probably some other areas as well. And so this has been another episode, another version of um, American Authors and Others. And you, you were razzled and dazzled and you really met one of our great members of LinkedIn community that is very supportive. I'm glad you, got, you guys got a chance, ladies and gents, to meet this, this very wonderful um, human being and individual. But we'll see you next time. And you stay, but you will see you next time. And you, you can just, we'll just say bye-bye. <laughs> but, but don't you go anywhere. <laughs> okay. okay. You guys take it easy. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.